So to begin the course, let's start by looking at SEO friendly URLs. To help me illustrate that, I'm going to preview my site inside of Safari by pressing Command P on the keyboard. Now when people talk about SEO friendly URLs, what they really mean are URLs that help describe the content on the page to search engine bots. Right now we're on the home page, so obviously the URL will simply be your domain name. Obviously I've got a local IP address because I'm previewing this locally. However, if I go to the add-ons page and we inspect the URL, we'll see that all we get is forward slash page. Now RapidWeaver does this out of the box. It gives each page a generic URL. And what this URL doesn't do is describe the content on the page. That's a key phrase that you're going to hear over and over again throughout this course. Describing the content on the page is really key. This is going to help search engines index your website more easily and be found for the key phrases that we're going to target. So the first thing we'll want to do is look at how we can update the URL for this add-ons page to help it describe the content. So to do that, let's go back to RapidWeaver and we've got the add-ons page selected here. To update the URL, open up the page inspector and go to the general settings. Then find the folder input here. This is where we can update the URL. So for this page, we would obviously want to call it add-ons. Now when we go back to Safari and refresh our site, we go back to the add-ons page. Now we can see the URL is forward slash add-ons. And this obviously describes the content in a much better way to search engines. Now we're going to be talking about keywords and how you can research which keywords you want to target throughout this course, but I wanted to touch on one key point before we go any further. What we might want to do for this URL is target both the RapidWeaver and add-ons keywords. So right now we already have add-ons in the URL, but obviously we don't have RapidWeaver. Now you have a couple of options here. Firstly, you could simply add RapidWeaver to the folder name inside of RapidWeaver's page inspector. So we could have something like RapidWeaver hyphen add-ons. You could add a subfolder or you could add a top level folder. So you could have RapidWeaver forward slash add-ons. Or like we have done on the RapidWeaver community site, you could purchase a domain name that features one of your keywords. So in this case, as I say, that would be rapidweavercommunity.com. Obviously, we would then have the RapidWeaver keyword inside of our domain name. So here we can see we have RapidWeaver and add-ons inside of that domain name. So we're targeting both of those keywords. So that's an option for you. If you don't already have domain name, it might be handy to pick one where you know that you have one of your main keywords inside of that URL. That way you can shorten the folder names or not have to add additional folders to all of your URLs. So for this site, I'm just going to leave it as forward slash add-ons because as I say, for the main site, we already have the RapidWeaver keyword in the URL. Okay, so next, if we go and look at one of the add-on details pages, so we click more information here, So we can see that we get the add-on stop level page and then underneath that, the add-on detail page has been given that generic page name by RapidWeaver. So we want to go and update that as well. So let's go back to RapidWeaver and we're on the Foundry page. And again, we can just update the folder name here so we can say Foundry. Now, when we go back to our site in Safari and preview that page, you'll see we now get add-ons forward slash Foundry. And now you can see we're starting to build up some keywords in our URLs that we want to be found for. As I say, if we had RapidWeaver Community as the domain name, and then we had add-ons and foundry, those are three very relevant keywords that someone might search for. And we've already got them directly inside of the URL. And as I said earlier, what we're also trying to do is describe the content on the page through the URL. So our URL of rapidweavercommunity.com forward slash add-ons forward slash foundry is giving an expectation to visitors and search engine bots that they're going to find an add-on for Rapidweaver called Foundry. And that's exactly what they're getting on the page. 
Now, before we move on to the other sections of the site, I want to mention for this URL, what we might want to do is add a subfolder underneath add-ons that adds the add-on type. So what I mean by that is if we were to add stacks as a folder here, we would be describing the page further. We're telling search engine bots that this page is about RapidWeaver add-ons, stack specifically, and then the foundry stack. So this is getting a little bit more descriptive. I want to mention this because depending on your site, you might want to divide your content up inside of subfolders. Now you don't want to go too deep. You don't want to have five, six, seven, eight subfolders. Keep it as simple as possible, but make it describe the content on the page. So if you have very defined areas of your site, like wanting to list out all of the RapidWeaver stacks add-ons, this might be an option for you. Now you have a couple of ways that you can achieve this inside of RapidWeaver. I'll show you the first way. If we go back to RapidWeaver, we have the Foundry page selected. Now, if you remember, the add-ons page has a folder name of add-ons. So what you might be thinking that you can do is simply enter stacks forward slash foundry inside of the folder name. However, that's not going to work because what we need to do, if you want to add folders for pages that don't exist, you need to add an absolute folder path. So to do this, what we would have to do is say forward slash add-ons forward slash stacks, forward slash foundry. Now when we go and preview that in the browser, if we go back to the foundry page and we inspect the URL, you'll see we now get that add-ons, stacks, foundry. However, if someone were to just go to add-ons, forward slash stacks, that page doesn't exist. So this might not be the best option for you because you don't want to have areas of your site where no content is displayed and a 404 error is returned. So if you want to define an area of your site like Stacks, what you can also do is, if we add a new page, and we say Stacks here, now if we give that folder name a name of Stacks, and then we put Foundry inside of there, we just need to update the folder name for Foundry to simply say Foundry here, and now if I just go into my library and I've got some partial set up here so that we can create pages throughout this course, all I'm going to do is add the navigation to the page just so that we've got something on this stacks page. Now, when we go back to Safari and refresh, you'll see we get that blank page, but if we go to stacks forward slash foundry, like so, you'll see we then get the foundry page. So obviously, on the add-ons homepage, we get a list of all the add-ons. Then if we were to go to forward slash stacks, we would get a list of just the stacks for RapidWeaver. Then if we go to forward slash the add-on name, so foundry in this example, we get information about that stack. Now I wanted to take time to explain that to you because this is really key when you're thinking about or you're designing the URLs for your site. You want to get as many keywords as possible into the URL, but you don't want to keyword stuff it. You want these URLs to be as short as possible, guessable, and very clean, and as I say, describe the content on the page. Now, I think this is a really good balance here. We get add-ons, stacks, and foundry inside of the URL, and those are all keywords that I target on the main RapidWeaver community site. Okay, finally for this video, if we have a quick look at the video section, I've already updated the folder names for this area. So if we inspect the URL here, you'll see we get tutorials. So again, that's a keyword that I target. And I already have RapidWeaver in my URL on rapidweavercommunity.com. So I have RapidWeaver and tutorials as my two main keywords for this page. This does the job. I don't think it needs anything else. Obviously, you can play around. You could have video hyphen tutorials if you wanted to. I personally don't do that because I'm just targeting RapidWeaver tutorials as my main keyword phrase here. But this is going to depend on your website and the content on each one of your pages. If it makes sense to add two words into the URL like this, I would do it with hyphens like I've done here. So 
video and tutorials. Those would be two very important keywords that I'm targeting. Again, you could add subfolders. It's going to depend on the content on your site. And you can do so if you wish, but I'm going to leave our site here as just forward slash tutorials. And then on the videos page, which I can show you inside of RapidWeaver, we have a folder name of video. So if I go to that URL in Safari, tutorials forward slash video, there you can see that we get the actual video on the page. So again, these are keywords that I'm targeting, RapidWeaver, tutorials and videos. But what this also does is describe the content on the page. So at the top level, I have tutorials and you can obviously guess that that is all the tutorials on the site. Then I drill down and I have individual videos. So I have this as a singular word, so video. And that is just so that the URL is again describing the content on the page. Now on the live site that we'll look at later on in this course, we'll obviously be including the slug or the unique ID for each individual video inside of the URL. So for this video, it would obviously be something like rapidweaver-https. And we would include it in the URL like so. But however, when we're in preview mode using total CMS, all I've done, if I go back to video, if I go back to RapidWeaver and inside of the blog post settings area, I've just told Total CMS to use a specific post when previewing the site locally. So I say we'll explain this later on in the course, but for now, all you need to understand is that we're trying to get the keywords inside of the URL to describe the page content. And we're doing that nicely here. We're saying this is RapidWeaver tutorials. This is an individual video and specifically the video about RapidWeaver and HTTPS. So again, just before we finish up, the key points here are that you want to include your keywords that you want to be found for in the URLs and you want to describe the page content to the search engine bots. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next video where we'll look at how we can match the browser titles to the keywords we're using in our URLs.